Hello there, thank you for joining me for another Watercolour Wednesday. Today we're going to be painting three bookmarks using simple shapes. And for this you will need a mixing palette of some sort, you can use anything you have, a vessel of water, a paintbrush, some paints. I'm using my, I've got my two palettes here and I'll decide what I'm using as I go along and it's a mix of various paints and I have my the Langton paint uh, I wouldn't call it a sketchbook it's a watercolor painting book and it's quite big and I have drawn out three bookmarks and the size is inches or five by 19 centimeters and I've drawn them lightly in pencil and then I'm simply going to be painting in there. I've made a little space at the top that I want to leave empty. And then I'm going to be laminating them at the end. I find doing something simple like this is great. If you're practicing watercolors and you're just wanting to do something that's fun. And it's always nice to have some bookmarks. You can give them as little hostess gifts or keep them for yourself. I find that painting these simple shapes can be incredibly therapeutic and the repetitive patterns and if you choose nice harmonious color schemes and then there's the lovely transparent layers that happen when you use watercolor paint and the simplicity of the subject all combined to give you a couple of like half an hour or so of lovely mindful painting. So for the first one, I'm going to simply be painting squares. And I've used some paint. The color that I'm using here is a Daniel Smith and it's called Terra Vert, T-E-R-R-E-V-E-R-T-E, -E -E -E, which is a French name, which actually means earth green, I think. Um, and I'm simply painting freehand squares. I'm using a size six round brush. This is a little Milan round brush that I got in a scroller box ages ago, and I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite brushes. And um, I'm going to zoom in so that you can see what I'm doing a bit more clearly. And I'm using different values as we've done before. I've discussed the importance of value. And that just adds interest to the painting. So you ch change the value by either adding more paint or more water to what you're doing. If you land up with too much water in a little square so that you think you're going to get funny edges or something, you can simply either blot it with your paper towel or you can dry your brush on your paper towel and then use that to suck up some of the extra water and that works quite well. I'm spacing these quite widely and I might add some a little later on and I'm doing them in all different sizes. So I say squares, some of them are actually rectangles but it's the, that kind of shape. So I'm going to be putting on a little bit of music for you, some nice relaxing music as I paint this and then I'll chat about it when I get into my next shape. I hope you enjoy it.
So now I've nearly finished the first of these little bookmarks with my squares and I decided on using a green color palette for all of them. I felt like playing with the greens after I'd done the color mixing video last time. I really enjoyed some of the greens that I had created last time and I decided to use some of them as well as some other ones. And then I was sort of thinking about the color green and looking up some things about green because I find it a restful color and it's got various different psychological and such like things associated with it. One of the things is optimism. It says the color green evokes a feeling of hopefulness, responsibility, wealth, forgiveness, comfort and energy all of which can be characteristics of someone who's optimistic. It also says in another thing about color psychology that green is highly connected to nature and money. Growth, fertility, health and generosity are some of the positive color meanings for the color. The color meaning for green also carries some negative associations such as envy. It can represent new beginnings and growth and it also signifies renewal and abundance. Um, it says also that green has many of the same calming attributes that blue has, but it also incorporates some of the energy of yellow. So I found that interesting. For my second color, my second bookmark, I've decided to go with leaves. And if you've never painted a leaf before, it's really easy to do. You put the tip of your brush down, press the belly down, get the shape of the leaf and fill it in. If you've got a bigger brush, you don't have so much to fill in. But tip, belly, tip is sort of the way to go. I'm largely using some of the core green yellow, no, green gold here, I think. I can't actually remember exactly what I used for this, I'm sorry to say, but I was just playing with them and enjoying the greens and I like the sort of goldiness to the green. And I love painting leaves. I live in hope of getting a really organic look to a leaf pattern. I've yet to achieve that, but we live in hope. What they say green is optimistic, so I'm going to be optimistic. I am getting better at doing different directions of leaves, so I feel happy about that. And you can see some of them land up a bit wonky and then you just use your paintbrush to sort of organize the shape. So we nearly finished this first layer of our leaf bookmark. And then we're going to get on to our next bookmark. This one looked very messy, so I'm sort of fixing it up a little bit. Now on to our next bookmark, and I'm going to try a slightly different green color. I'm using one of my blues. I was playing and toying with the idea of going into a blue. And so I'm using the Daniel Smith French Ultramarine, but then I decided to create a green. And so with that, I'm using the Daniel Smith New Gamboge. And so it's a slightly blue green, which is one of the colors I did in the color mixing. And I'm going to do circles freehand circles, so they're likely to be slightly wonky circles. <laughs> and this first one I'm doing, and I've got a very concentrated mix of paint on there, and I think 
I'll see, I'll leave it for a few minutes that I probably will end up lifting some of that. Now to get different sizes of circle is going to be the object of this exercise and to fill up the bookmark. So while I do that, I'm going to put some more music on for you, which I hope you will enjoy. And now we're reaching the end of our first layer of paints. And so I'm going to leave these three to dry overnight and I'll be back in the morning. But for you, it will be the blink of an eye to do the second layer. I'm just feeling them, but they are still damp and I want to get wet on dry so that we get the nice layering effect. So I'll leave these and I'll be back in a few seconds. In the blink of an eye and a splash of purple paint, we're back and we're going to be repeating the same process just on top of the dried one. So I'm staying with green but using slightly different colors. This is actually Windsor and Newtel, <laughs> Windsor and Newtel, Windsor and Newton emerald green. And these are all Cotman paints, I think, the Windsor and Newtons in this palette. And I'm going to be going over the little squares that are already there, not all of them. But I absolutely love this whole effect that you get in watercolor of layering. And because of the transparency of the watercolor, you can see the underlayer 
sort of shining through. You need to just take a little bit of care not to mess with the top layer too much because then you stand the chance of activating the under layer and you want it to remain there so that you can see what it looks like. And I think that creates a lovely looking pattern. So as I do this, I'm going to speed this up a little bit and I'm going to put some more music on. Well, now we've almost finished doing all three of the bookmarks and I've really enjoyed the process of doing them and I find the colours quite pleasing. I'm, what I did was, I've done it already, is I left them to dry and then I don't have I don't have a laminating machine at home and so I took them off to a store and I had them laminated there. And I made the one mistake. What I should have done is erased the pencil marks, except perhaps the top pencil mark where I wanted it cut off. Because I then asked the guy to cut them for me as well because I don't have a guillotine or anything so I wanted them cut straight and I asked him to cut the pencil marks off so I kind of felt that he cut them just a little bit too narrow. I think it would have been nice if there'd been a small amount of white space left on either side so when I make and I will be making more bookmarks um, I will erase the edges myself and ask him just to or I'll 
draw an inner square or something that I can erase where I do the pattern and get him to cut on a line next time. But they're finished now and I'll show you what they look like once they have been turned into bookmarks. So ta-da, here's bookmark number one of the squares. I used some string for that and for this one I used some ribbon with notes. I don't have much in the way of ribbon. If they were for gifts I would have gone to buy something particular. This is shining. I'm just going to move it to the other side. And I think they're quite nice and I'll definitely use them. So that will be nice and I'll do something else. You can see the lamination and there's the piano note. I was thinking as I looked at the piano notes and I think the string actually looks nicer. I thought it would be quite fun to try and watercolor some piano notes as a bookmark as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I want to thank you for joining me and I hope you'll come and watch again next time. Bye bye now.